tucked away on a bend in the Tigris River, hard by the western Iraqi desert, lies Souk Shalan. Invading armies from ancient Assyrian to modern American don't bother stopping here. And no one has ever asked any of its 1,000 souls what they think or want. But if the promise of democracy in Iraq is more than mere Western propaganda to justify a war, then everyone will have their say. And someone should listen. The countries that launched what they call Operation Iraqi Freedom say they will not even try to count the number of Iraqis they killed. There are certainly many thousand dead. قدرت نلحق عليه طلعته ظلت زوجتي اخر شيء محترقه مره واحده قامت تصيح ستروني ستروني ما عندي ملابس In the southern town of Nazaria Sheikh Al Zuhiri puts a precise figure on what freedom has cost him It's the number of dead in his family 14 The Americans bombed his house by mistake and killed his wife four children his mother his father two sisters, a brother, and four nieces and nephews. What's left of Saddam's bath party headquarters in Nazaria, where people come to take what's salvageable and to ponder what's happened to them. Ahmed on the left believes the Americans came to free Iraqis from Saddam. His friend Aziz reckons they came for the oil. But they're both grateful all the same. I prefer any party than Ba'ath. Anything's better than the Ba'ath party? Anything. Anything. I think it uh, will be good life if you want. Or uh, if you want, if you want, if everybody wants, everybody want to a good life. There is no trouble. <laughs> the people of Nazaria haven't got much time to wonder what will happen next. They're simply trying to get through without water, electricity, medicines, sewage, wages, or affordable fresh food. <laughs> Already malnourished and dependent on food rations, Iraqis fear that war will be followed by epidemic. Some Iraqis may have strewn flowers for their liberators. Many more are simply very angry with what freedom has so far delivered. No electricity, no fuel, no water. Why? This is a question for the George Bush. Why? This is the freedom. This is the freedom? The Americans say they are bringing you freedom. Where is this freedom? Where is The war has left the country with the world's second largest oil reserves, short of fuel to run its cars or its kitchens. Still, amidst chaos, there are signs of life in the body politic of Iraq. كعراق موحد واحد بغض النظر عن الطوائف والدين والقوميات نحن نريد أن نبني عراقنا بشكل كامل ننظر للإنسان على أساس عراقيته بغض النظر أن يكون كردي أو تركماني أو عربي أو ولا أن ننظر هل هو شيعي أو سني ما ننظر للإنسان إن كان مسلم أو مسيحي وحتى إن كان يهودي نتعاون كعراقيين لبناء هذا العراق من جديد Sami al-Ubaidi is a Sunni Muslim from the north 
running his political pitch past Shia tribal leaders of Nazaria in the south. This is a rare event, but what's about to happen is unique. Mr Ubaidi is going out on the streets to drum up votes for the first legal, independent political party formed inside Iraq in about 40 years. But he admits he's afraid that America won't like the process, preferring to put in its own puppets. When we get there, it's not a big affair. A gaggle of curious potential voters lured away for a short while from the business of survival. This little meeting marks the start of something resembling what we would recognize as the democratic process and the hope that such a process represents. All these people with me, all this, thank you very much. You, uh, you heard that. All, all people with us. Is it good today, is it good today to be a politician in Iraq? Yes, very good, very good. Another form of political process is taking place elsewhere in the city, where after years of repression under Saddam, traditional authorities are trying to reassert themselves. So, Saddam, when is Saddam... Here, tribal and religious leaders are quick to assure visitors that the Shiites of Iraq have no intention of following their Iranian neighbors in forging an Islamic revolution. العراق ما راح تكون بجمهورية إسلامية لأن العراق في خلية كوكتيل زين من المواطنين من القوميات الثانية في الآشوريين في اليزيديين في الصابئة في المسلمين بشقيهم الأكثرية الشيعية وأخواننا السنة والقومية الكردية الموجودة فهذه يعني إحنا نأخذها بعين الاعتبار بالنسبة لنا تطرف عند الشعب العراقي ما موجود نهائيا تطرف ديني ما موجود قد يكون أكو تطرف سابق وانتهى إن شاء الله دور اللي التطرف السياسي اللي كان النظام The Americans see a danger of Iranian-backed Islamic movements rising in holy cities like An-Najaf and threatening their plans for a secular, pro-Western Iraq. They tried to manipulate the outcome by expediting the return of a friendly, exiled cleric. But his opponents promptly stabbed him to death in a mosque. In the alleyways of the houses, the religious communities, influential Shia clerics believe the U.S. wants to shut them out of the new power structure before going on to launch Operation Iranian Freedom next door. The message is, don't meddle. There's just one job to do, and then get out quickly. This suspicion of America is almost universal in the South where everyone remembers how George Bush Sr. encouraged the Shia to revolt against Saddam in 1991 and then deserted them to a fate in which thousands died. Suspicion of American intentions rose further when the Pentagon's favorite exile, Ahmed Chalabi, 
returned with a militia trained by U.S. special forces and paid in American dollars. In a region in which control of an army spells ultimate power, Chalabi's arrival has reinforced impressions that the U.S. intends to shoehorn its friends into power, friends obligated to look after America's interests over Iraq's. It's a message the Americans claim they didn't intend to send. I do not see this, nor does anybody in my chain of command see this as a, a militia for any opposition leader, nor, nor would any unit of this type uh, end up being a militia for any opposition leader. What about Iraqis perceiving it as being a militia for Dr. Ahmed Chalabi or an opposition figure? I've not heard any, uh, any discussion of that in any of the meetings that I've attended. There, there may be people who see it that way, but I'm not aware of it. Chalabi refused to talk to us, but the militiamen told us they owed their loyalty to him and the Americans. And with Saddam routed, they have an idea who their next enemy might be. احنا من حارب الاسلام نعني الاسلام اخواننا اولا عراقيين من عندنا بس نرجو من عندهم نرجو من عندهم ثلاث مرات نرجو من عندهم لا يتدخلون بشغل بعملنا لا يتدخلون بشغلنا لان احنا عراقيين ونعرف شلون نحل قضيتنا ما نريد ان الاسلام يجي يتدخل بقضيتنا ويشبكنا ويسوي بيناتنا تفرقه It's almost inconceivable now, but back in the 1970s, Iraq was prospering on oil with standards of education and health that were the envy of most developing nations. But despite Saddam's wars, economic neglect and years of international sanctions, there are Iraqis who believe the ultimate humiliation is still to come. Muhammad Abdul Hamid spent eight years in jail, accused of belonging to a banned Shia political party, though he says he never did. Muhammad would far rather live under Saddam than see his country devastated and dishonored by the occupation of a nation like America that he believes has no respect for his religion, his culture, or for the dignity of his people. والحرية اللي راح تنطيناها أمريكا راح تنطينا أزيد ما تنطينا الفساد فساد راح تفتح لنا بالشعب راح تفسد الشعب تفسد أخلاق الشعب راح تلهي الشعب بهذا الشيء فساد أما طور عمل أو فت شيء بحد شنو بحد هم يلت إلى هنا من أنا خلونا إحنا نلتهب هذا الشيء بعدنا يش ينشده هذا الشيء وهو يسحب النفط على راحته منه in the Shia-dominated South, antagonism and suspicion run deep, from the cities to rural villages like Souk Shalan. The war ended with near-perfect timing for Iraq's Shia community to celebrate its faith with a 1,400-year-old pilgrimage that Saddam banned. Two million set out to mark the martyrdom of a grandson of the Prophet Muhammad, and in doing so, a long-oppressed community began to rediscover its voice. The Americans showed commendable discretion by keeping well in the background. They're remarkably compassionate, remarkably family-oriented, remar remarkably generous and loving people. And I'm overjoyed that I'm with them. They're beautiful people. There is hope, even some goodwill to build upon. How America goes about getting what it wants, a pliable, friendly Iraqi leadership, 
and yet one that genuinely reflects the competing demands of the Shia and other groupings, will be crucial. Then it has to get out, and quickly. The alternative is almost unthinkable. Chaotic upheaval, Iraqis turning on Americans and each other, collapse of the state, and the almost inevitable emergence of a new strongman, a new Saddam.